So without further ado, I'll hand it over to, to Feng Yu. Um, uh, it's good to see you, Feng Yu, and thank you for offering to, to present the paper. And um, well, uh, over to you. I think it has to do with uh, gender discrimination and the Arab Spring. And so uh, looking forward to hearing what the impact is. So I'm going to share my screen. Hi everyone. First, thank Hi. you. Hi. <laughs> thank you very much for attending my presentation. The topic of today's presentation is uh, the Arab Spring: A Setback for Gender Equality, Evidence from the Gallup World Poll. This is a joint work with Robert Rudolph and Shun Wang, and it is still preliminary. And it, it's the first time I presented this work, so any comments are welcome. Um, many of us may know that um, gender equality is one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal for 2030. However, um, we, can, we still uh, observe large gender gaps in many parts of the world, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa. For example, the female labor force participation in 2019 was merely 20.2%, for the MANA countries on average. It was the lowest among all the, among all the world regions. And it was only a small increase from the 17.4% in 1990. A number of studies um, have found that the low st status of women in MANA countries is linked to agriculture, Islam being a source of legislation and the patriarchal economy. And there's a growing literature on the determinants um, of gender equality. Um, because of the time constraint, I'm not going, going to explain those studies here, but I would like to um, persuade you that our study contributes to the literature on the effects of political shocks on gender equality by looking at one particular political shock, which is the Arab Spring. Just give you a very brief introduction to the Arab Spring. It was mainly driven by the dissatisfaction with standard of living, poor labor market condition, uh, lack of political voice and corruption. The Arab Spring protests first broke out in Tunisia in December 2010 and rapidly spread across the Mara region uh, within only two months. Um, the, the scales of the protests uh, were quite different in different countries. Um, in some severe cases, the protests resulted in political changes in a number of MANA countries including regime changes in Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and Yemen, and civil wars in Iraq, Libya, Syria, and Yemen. Um, about the data of this study, we use data, we use micro-level data from the Gallup World Poor 2009 to 2018 for up to 17 MANA countries, and we focus on individuals aged 15 to 64. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Gallup, it continuously surveys residents in more than 150 countries across the world. And the typical Gallup survey, um, survey consists of a, a thousand individuals in each country. In many countries, the surveys are collected on an annual basis. Our baseline sample include countries that have both before and after our spring survey waves. So um, the sample consists of up to um, 11 MANA countries, and we have four outcome variables, labor force participation and three gender norms variable, um, equal rights across gender, women's unrestricted access to occupations and women's right to initiate a divorce. Um, we have different sample sizes for different outcome variables, mainly because 
um, different, uh, different numbers of survey years available for these countries. For labor force participation, we have the largest sample size and the variable covers um, 2009 to 2018. For the three gender norms variables, unfortunately, we only have two waves for each. Um, one, the first wave was in 2009, um, it is the wave right before the Arab, Arab Spring, and 2011, which was the wave um, after or during the Arab Spring. So for the three gender norms variable, we can only identify the short-term uh, impact of the Arab Spring protests. About the definitions of these three gender norms variable, um, we, we constructed these variables from um, three, three questions from Gallup, respectively. First, do you agree to the statement women and men should have equal legal rights. Second, do you agree to the statement, women should be allowed to hold any job they, that they are qualified for outside the home? And finally, do you agree to the statement, we, women should have the right to initiate a divorce? Another important variable of our study um, is a protest index, which we took from an Wolfsfield at all 2013, the authors aim, aims to measure the level of significant protests during the most important weeks of the Arab Spring. How do they do? They examine a total of eight days from the first significant protest of the most active week of the protests in each country. And they define a significant protest as a protest with at least a thousand participants. The index is defined as the number of days with, protests, with significant protests ranging from zero to eight. As a robustness check, we use an alternative protest measure, which is uh, the total number of protests during the main Arab, Arab Spring period. Here comes our main um, empirical strategy. We rely on a difference in differences model. Um, here, um, I means individual, J means region or province within a country, and T means year. Y denotes our um, outcome variable, labor force participation or gender norms. Post is a time dummy equal to one for post Arab Spring period, meaning um, 2011 and or onward, um, and zero for the base period, which is 2009 to 2010. Our protest variable is the protest index, and we control for the individual and household characteristics, um, region fixed effects, and year fixed effects. Um, we asked, um, in addition, we include the interaction between X and post to uh, take into account the potential time varying effects of these individual and household level characteristics. We estimate um, equation one uh, for labor force participation using female sample only for the gender norms variables, we estimate equation one with both um, males and female sample combined. Here, our coefficient of interest is a uh, beta one, which, de which denotes the effects of the Arab Spring protests on one of the four um, outcome variables during the post Arab Spring period. Next, we are also interested in testing if there's any gender difference in the impact of the Arab, Arab Spring protests on labor force participation. So we extend equation one in the previous slide to a triple difference model. Here, our coefficient of interest uh, becomes gamma one, which represents the impact of the Arab Spring protests on female labor force participation relative to their effect on male labor force participation. And 
summer uh, two here denotes the impact of our spring protests on mere labor force participation only. Here, I'm going to present you the, our, the main results of our analysis. This table one um, repre uh, presents the effects of our spring pro exposure on female labor force participation. In column one, we use the double difference approach and the female sample only. Here, um, our coefficient of interest, the interaction between polls and protests um, is negative and significant. This means an increase in the protest index um, reduce female labor force participation during the post arrow spring period. And, we, and in column two, we investigate um, if there's any gender difference in the effects of arrow spring. Um, we use the triple difference model. And here, our double interaction, the interaction between polls and protests has a negative but uh, insignificant coefficient. It means the Arab Spring protest has no significant influence on the, uh, on the male labor force participation. However, if we look at the triple difference coefficient, it has a significant and negative um, effect. Um, to interpret this coefficient, uh, we look at the change associated with a uh, one standard deviation increase in the protest index. This means a one standard deviation increase in the protest index uh, reduced female labor force participation by 3.7% um, during the post arrow spring period. Next, we investigate the effects of the arrow spring protests on the three gender norms. Um, we find the, the coefficient on this double difference coefficient um, is, are negative um, and significant. Um, for equal rights uh, across gender, women's unrestricted access to occupations and women's right to initiate divorce. To, um, to explain, to, elast to interpret these coefficients, um, we also look at the changes um, associated with um, the increase um, in uh, the increase associated with one standard deviation increase in protest index. Um, uh, as, we are, uh, as far as we, we are concerned, um, uh, one standard deviation increase in the protest index lowered the support for the three uh, for the three women's rights statement by 3.4, 4.2, and 6% respectively. We conducted a number of further analysis, uh, including heterogeneous analysis um, by age, education, and types of location, and a number of robustness checks. We also validate the key assumption um, for the dif difference di in difference framework, which is a parallel trends assumption. Finally, we are interested in, explore, in exploring the potential mechanisms for the negative effects of our spring protests on those gender related outcomes. An early, early literature from the political science studies suggests that the Arab Spring protests promoted an anti Western zeitgeist and led to a rise in Islamic oriented parties. And a number of qualitative studies have found these Islamist oriented parties often aim to establish Sharia based regimes, which tend to restrict people's, um, people's uh, freedom in daily life and promote more traditional gender roles. And other studies have found for a few reasons, the changes happening in the Arab Spring countries may lead to various destinations other than liberal democracy. So in this study, we want to demo demonstrate 
quantitatively that the Arab Spring has led to a shift in the Arab zeitgeist toward a less liberal and less secular society. We first utilize the data from uh, the Gallup World Poor. Uh, we look into the three, um, uh, three, four measures on the perceived freedom, um, freedom in life, freedom in media, freedom in speech, and freedom in assembly. And we use the same difference in difference approach. Um, in in column, columns one and two, um, we see um, the Arab Spring protests have um, negative and significant influence in people's perceived freedom in life and perceived freedom in media. But for columns three, four, and four, we see the effects are negative but not significant. But we suspect that the reason is um, the, sample si the sample sizes for these two variables are much smaller. And uh, in fact, it has uh, fewer countries and uh, fewer waves. Next, um, we, we look at two measures, um, women's specific freedom, women's security and safety, and women's, uh, mo women's movement from uh, human freedom index. Uh, here, we categorize our 11 countries in the baseline to the countries uh, with higher level of pro uh, protests and lower level of protests. We define those with high intensity as the countries uh, with protest index scored uh, four um, or above. And, uh, and for other countries, we categorize them as low intensity countries. We see um, for, uh, for both uh, measures, um, they decrease sharply um, after our spring, especially in the countries with higher level of um, protests. And also if we look at freedom on women's movement, um, it recovered much slowly um, over time for countries with higher level uh, of protests. To conclude, um, we find our spring protests significantly reduce female labor force participation. Um, in addition, the protests lower the support for women's rights, including equal legal rights across gender, women's unrestricted access to occupations, and their right to initiate a divorce. About the potential mechanisms our empirical results appear to be consistent with the argument in, in earlier literature, suggesting a shift in the Arab zeitgeist towards a less liberal and less secular society. Thank you very much for listening.